This is the Flying Bear Tornado, a huge metal Core XY 3D printer kit with linear rails for 500 bucks. What could go wrong? How's it going guys? Angus here from Makers Muse coming at you with yet another 3D printer review. This time it's the Flying Bear Tornado, not to be confused with another 3D printer with the same name. So let me just preface by saying I had no idea what I was getting myself into when I agreed to this review of a kit. I just saw linear rails and thought, oh cool, something different. It has a print volume of 350 by 300 by 300 millimeters and it does indeed have the very neat Core XY or HBOT XY configuration. Produces both motors, motors working together or against each other to move the gantry on linear rails. The machine comes with a huge heated aluminium plate with Chinese fake tack, fake build tack, get it? And this particular version has the BL Touch Pro for bed level and the Z height. And it has a dual inline nozzle setup. I've never really been a fan of this, I'll be honest. And I only just use a single nozzle for my tests, at least so far. And before you get your hopes up, the photos have a tantalizing looking dual extruder setup, but uh, it's not what it seems. It's nothing like an independent setup like the Sigma might employ, but instead it's just two joined to the same belt. So it's used for tandem printing or something like that. Um, I really wouldn't bother. Alrighty, the assembly experience. Not bad, the manual is pretty detailed and I didn't have any significant issues putting this machine together as specified. The rails only use every second hole to secure them in place to the aluminum extrusion. So keep that in mind, you'll run out of hardware like I did if you try to use every single one. And let me stress right here that this is not a beginner's kit. In fact, if you've put 3D printers together before, you should even then really consider the fact that this machine is huge, it has a lot of parts and the assembly time is pretty tedious. I mean, you can only zip tie wires away so much without ending up with a absolute mess and you know, where you put the, the limit switch for the, the Y axis is completely up to you. Uh, but it did go together pretty well and the part quality of the metal, metal frame is actually really, really quite nice. This machine has an always on mains power supply and a DC side power switch, which is like, why? You know, it's always on through the mains and you're already touching mains to wire the damn thing up. So why not just have a switch on the main side? And there's been reports on the Facebook tornado group that this power switch isn't even rated enough for the DC current running through the bed. So yeah, I might replace it and I wouldn't really miss it anyway. It doesn't even seat properly into the uh, control case. And speaking of the power supply, you'll probably have to replace it anyway because it's completely gutless and crap. Uh, reports on the Facebook group say that people are replacing it because it browns out and I just ran the bed at a very low temperature or not even at all to print PLA and you don't really need heat anyway for PLA, it's stuck fine to the print surface. So keep that in mind as well. Alrighty, time to power it on and get some prints done, right? Wrong. It seems the firmware supplied from factory simply doesn't work. It doesn't properly auto level with a BL touch and it throws heating errors every five seconds. Facebook to the rescue, the firmware provided by Pasha fixed things nicely. Big thanks. So I hope you dudes weren't expecting a glowing review of this machine because I ain't done yet. Let's talk about these 8825 drivers. Long story short, they scream high pitch noise. And as someone with hypersensitive hearing working in the same room, it made this machine unusable. I literally could not have it on. It was too painful. Looking on AliExpress, it seems that enough people have complained now they're shipping with the TMC 2208s. But I just replaced the original drivers on my machine with some crappy A4988s, which just came from another kit I had. And it made this machine quite enough to be usable. Did have to halve the steps per millimeters in firmware to account for the different level of micro stepping though, but it wasn't too difficult. But just, meh, why? And the fun does not stop there. First prints off the tornado were, for a lack of a better word, uh, absolutely terrible. Major Z banding due to the table visually rocking back and forth as it moves, the parts had zero strength and the long burden tube does no favors in terms of getting extrusion accuracy. Oh, and also yet another kit that doesn't come with a part cooling fan. I ended up downloading this one from Theory on the Facebook group and printing it in Polymaker PC Max on the Upmini 2, which is a very good printer that actually prints things properly. 
The final straw was when I came back to a print to find this. My poor BL touch literally bent in half. I have no idea how this happened. Perhaps it let go and got caught on the edge of the print bed or something, or on the edge of the print even. But on closer inspection, I wasn't too sad. It turns out this, this is not a genuine BL touch. It's, in, it's instead simply a inspired by Ant Labs knockoff. So luckily I had a proper BL touch that Paris gave to me in person when I met, the, met her at the Bay Area Maker Fair. So I put that in place and so far it's done a good job at auto level and not dropping mid print. It's interesting that you can really tell the difference between the knockoff and the real deal hardware. And this seems to be a theme for this machine in general. The print quality was still pretty bad. Um, I'm still having trouble getting prints to even complete without being ripped apart. And look, honestly, I suppose this takes us to the conclusion. Who is this printer for? Well, masochists maybe? I mean, people who like pain and suffering? Let's be honest, this machine will never function from the factory in its original form. It will need massive improvements to even get decent prints off. Even the damn firmware was wrong straight from the factory. But why do I find myself continuing to tinker on it? Have I finally joined the dark side of the 3D printing tinkerers group? Look, let's be honest. The fact is the design of the Tornado is fantastic. It's a rigid, well-constructed machine. It's just let down with terrible, terrible hardware. And people are buying these things with that in mind. They're actually buying new linear rails and new extruders. And if I got some Capricorn PTFE tube, I'd be able to improve the extrusion accuracy, new lead screws so the bed doesn't rock back and forth as it goes up and down, things like that. But if you're going down that path, why not just start from scratch with a proven Core XY design like the Hypercube? Chris over at Tech2C did a great job on that design, and when all's said and done, you'll probably end up spending less if you go down that route making something from scratch than you would upgrading this 3D printer. This is the era of 3D printer part kits direct from China with little to no quality control. And when purchasing machines like this, you really need to take that into account. Because at the end of the day, you do get what you pay for. I'll chuck a link in the description of this video if you're interested in picking up a flying bear tornado. And if you enjoyed this video, then why not subscribe? My name is Angus and I look forward to seeing you again very shortly here on Maker's Muse. Catch you later guys. Bye.